Hello, good evening. First of all, thanks to be here. So support me, please. It's a very tough topic to discuss, very important. So let me express my gratitude to the mentors of this home because it's, uh, it's quite tough to talk about, about them, the women in gospel. Very important thing. So uh, it's interesting that in the gospel, we've got 12 apostles, right? 12 men. Jesus was a man, biological one, and the apostles as well. But the most important messages we can see in gospel, we use a woman as, a, as the main character. That's the reflection for today. So what we can learn from her, both from Mary, a lot of Marys, right? Mary of Nazareth, Mary Madeleine, and so on. So what we can, what we can learn from them. It's very tough because the message that they gave to us, it's about spiritual strength. Right, basically is this thing. So not nothing against the men, but they prove here that they're much, much powerful than any other man. What they suffered at that time, what they surpassed at that time was amazing, was awesome. So that's a reflection today to bring us to this time. Let's deep dive in this time. Remember what happened to them. And then we can summarize with the final lessons we can capture from them. And basically, today is just an hour. This subject here, it should be a, a topic for a week of conference, for sure. A week. Years of study, right? Valdo? Years of study. Five? Something like that, right? Five years of study. So I'm trying to summarize that thing in an hour. But if, if at the end I motivated you to go deep on that thing, it's fine. That's the target for today. Motivate all of you to go deeper in the message that they provided to us. Okay? Let's move on here. Our references for today. So they're in Portuguese, unfortunately. So if we've got a volunteer to translate those books... Please offer yourself. If not, you can download at least this one here. You can. This one, the Boa Nova, good news. You can translate using Google because it's available in PDF. It's not a thick one. It's about this size. But if you like gospel characters, that's a nice book. It, uh, it was written by Chico Xavier from the Spirito, Spirit of Humberto de Campos. It's nice. Some, there are some chapters there that you almost, if you don't cry, read it again because you didn't read it well. So I highly recommend the, the reading of this book. The other one is The Woman in Gospel. It's from Alcione Peixoto. Alcione, I think... She did uh, a live two years ago in the middle of the pandemic situation, exactly about the women in gospel, right? So there are two good books, besides the basic one, the spirit, the, the book, the spirit's book and the gospel according to spiritism. So if you can read any one of these books, you believe me, you're going to like it. You'll love it. Mainly this one. Good news is a pretty nice one. Okay, let's bring Kardec here. So this book here, so uh, as you probably know, I like numbers. So when this book was published, 1857, it's more than 150 years ago, right? So look at what Kardec said in this book. The time that Kardec wrote this book, 
women, I think they, they even, they didn't vote at that time, right? It's pretty a side in the society. But look at what Kardec mentioned it in 1857 when he published that thing. Are the functions for which women are intended by nature as important as those confer upon men? Look at how Kardec, Kardec was so advanced in his time. Yes, and even greater, even greater, women give men the first notions of life. So you see, Kardec is bringing this spiritual power and showing women has a lot of power, spiritual power, a hundred, more than 150 years ago. Amazing, right? Amazing. Nowadays, no conflicts, right? This message is absolutely up to date. Absolutely up to date. Thanks, Kardec. Okay. Let's set up the basics and let's understand what is spiritual strength. What is strength? Yes, strength. Definition here. I've got a definition here. Raise your hand. What is your definition of strength? It matches with that? Yes, no? Ability to voluntarily carry out a set of actions to achieve a goal. Right? What is the set of actions? We are talking about the spiritual strength. The, sex, the set of actions should be related to spiritual actions, right? Spiritual actions not, does not mean that you're going to get this chair and move this chair. Get your strength to move this chair from here to there. No, spiritual strength. Let's see what is the spiritual strength. Spiritual strength, resignation, faith, perseverance, and resilience, right? But how can we prove? I like to set that thing into numbers, as I said. How can we put that thing into numbers? Can I prove to you that the, uh, the, the woman has uh, more power than, more strength than a man? For this thing right here, can I prove into numbers? You want to see that thing into numbers? Let me show you into numbers. Let me prove to you. Life affects expectation. From this picture right here, who's gonna last longer? Incarnated. Who's gonna last longer? Men or women? Women, right? Women? How many years? Guess the difference. How many years? More? 30 years more? Than a man? Not so much, right? Seven? Yeah. Here in US. Look at that. It's about five years, right? More. You see, it's not now. It's a, it's a growing curve here. So the men is lasting longer, women lasting longer as well. The same difference. Is this thing by any chance? Of course not. Our friends in the, in the other side in the spiritual world, they plan for that. So usually the women will live about five years. What does that mean, five years? is that the probability, the likelihood to be a widow is higher than to be a widower, right? To be a widow, what you need to be a widow? Spiritual strength, because at the end of your life, you're gonna be alone. Look at that, how can you? So I prove into numbers here, right? Make sense? Is this by any chance? Of course not. It's not by any chance. 
that's planted by the spirituality, right? Statistic. And in Brazil and other countries, if you pick the this graph here, it's almost the same. It's almost the same, right? The difference, sometimes it's greater. I think in Brazil, for example, it's greater. Some countries in the in Europe are greater, but in average, women are living more than a man. So just to not scare anyone, so this is not a deadline for us, right? Please, this is not a deadline. So it's an average, right? It's an average. Make sense? Into numbers? No questions on that, right? No questions. Okay. So let's talk about them. The women in gospel. How many characters we've got in the gospel that represents a woman and represent the spiritual strength? We've got a lot here. Look at that. That's what I said. It's going to be a week or five years of study to cover all of them. Partially, right? If you want to cover everything, years to study all of them. So Mary of Nazareth. We don't need to, introduction, to introduce her to anyone, right? It's the most famous mother that we know. So I think anywhere in the world, if you talk about Mary of Nazareth, everybody knows about her, right? After Jesus, I think she's the second one. The Mary of Migdal, it's the, the Madeleine. Mary Madeleine. So I'm going to talk about her as well. Joanne of Chusa. It's another one. I'm going to talk more about her. The widow of Nain. The widow of Nain, if you don't know the, the, the history on this, uh, she was walking with, uh, in a funeral for uh, her son, and Jesus brought him back to life. I think it was one of the first documented miracles from Jesus. The Samaritan women that uh, had a conversation with Jesus in the Jacob's will, and he explained it that to, uh, to adore God, you do not need to go to the hill or go to the church. You, need, you can adore God from your heart. The bleeding woman. The bleeding woman is another fantastic one. In the middle of a crowd, she, she touched Jesus and she was cured by, she had a problem of bleeding. And at that time, if you are not aware, if a woman, if someone has a disease at that time, the family push them out. So a bleeding woman was, was a woman that was pushed out by, by her family. She was living in the streets. And then in the middle of a crowd, she touched the, the cloth of Jesus. And then Jesus perceived it. Oh, there's a virtue coming out of me. Energy coming out of me. Because her faith, her faith has cured him, has cured her. Right? Fantastic story. The sisters, Mary and Martha of Bethany, they were the sister of Lazarus, who was brought from the tomb three days after his death from Jesus, by Jesus, right? Fantastic stories about both of them. Isabel, what else? There's a lot of women there. Each one of them has a pretty nice story of spiritual strength. I invited all of you to take a look into them. So there's a lot, a lot of documentaries, books, and so on. Let's concentrate here into the three ones here on the top. Mary of Nazareth, Mary of Migdal, and Joanne of Chusa. Okay? I'm so sorry, we don't have time to talk 
so much about all of them. But let's go deeper on these three ones right here and motivate you to go even deeper in this reflection. So let's deep dive a little bit in the, in the history. Here's the, the world that we know at that time. So if you see the hero right here, the, the hero is what? The same size as the United States. Look at that, it's not so big. But at this time, we don't have cars, we don't have airplanes. Everything is on foot. Or using a camel, or a donkey, a horse. It's not so easy, right? So home, in the center of the world, main city, the New York at that time, right? And here, very far away, very far away, right? It's like you're in the north of Canada. No one cares about that thing. So pretty remote site. Right here, these women presented their stories. Pretty hard time, right? Let me zoom in this area right here, and I will give you an example here. So this is the, this is the Galilee Sea, right? Where Jesus started, started to present himself. Nazareth is right here. Jerusalem is right here. So the distance until uh, from Jerusalem to, to Tiberias, it's about 150 kilometers. It's about 100 miles, right? On foot, 32 hours straight. Imagine if you walk right today from here to close to Tampa and back. That's the distance. And Mary did that thing from Nazareth to Bethlehem, close to Jerusalem here, pregnant. Can we imagine that thing? Imagine if you are pregnant, nine months, right? Going from Nazareth to Jerusalem. And he gave birth to Jesus right here. I cannot imagine nowadays if uh, someone can do that thing. I cannot imagine. You see? How hard is the life? Let us zoom it a little bit more here. That's the, the Sea of Galilee. Capernaum, where Jesus started with the, the apostles. That's the city of Peter. Right? We've got Migdal right here, where Mary Madeleine was living. We've got Nazareth from right there. So from Nazareth to Capernaum, it's, 40, it's about uh, nine hours walking. Crazy, right? With no stop, no bar to eat something, nothing. Look at how hard it is to survive. You must have at that time, not only uh, physical to support that thing, but also spiritual to do that. Okay, any questions here? It's good to dip right here, to go to deep dive right here, to understand the, the way that they live. So bring our, change our mindset to that period right here, quite tough. Okay, so let's start with Joanne of Chusa. Joanne of Chusa, she was a noble. She, she had power, money, because she was the wife of Chusa. Chusa was the, let's say, the administrator of Herodes. Herodes was the, the king. When, let me just rewind a little bit. So when the, the Romans uh, con uh, conquered the, 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 uh, the Palestine, right, the, the area of the Israel, they get the king, Herodes, and kick him out. Kick him out, but they maintain Herodes there because 
the, the Romans, when they conquer something, they do not get rid of the, the culture, the gods or whatever they had there because the, the Romans were, they were very interested in the money. They just want to get the money. And then they moved Herodes to Tiberias, north of Jerusalem, very far away. Remember? About 100 miles distance, stay there. And the Sea of Galilee, around the Sea of Galilee, was a very poor, remote area. The Romans didn't care about them so much. And she was the, the wife of Chusa. Chusa was the administrator for Herodes. So, of course, the administrator of the king, a lot of power, of course. What she wanna, what she wanna did at this time? She gave resources to the to the apostles. Money, they need money, right? To make all the the missions and so she supported them because she believed in Jesus. She had faith in Jesus. And she was one of the, the women that witnessed the empty tomb of Jesus. The other one was the Mary Madeleine and Mary, the mother of James, James the minor, one of the apostles. Okay? But because of she, she was a Christian and she had pretty high moral values, and of course, uh, her, her husband, administrator of the king, the king is a, was a very evil one. Herodes was a very evil one. So the moral value that Joanna had was not aligned with the moral values of her husband, Chusa. So she had a lot of conflicts because of this uh, misalignment, right? And there was, she had a son, but she went to Jesus because she was planning to give up about her marriage. And she would like to follow Jesus all the time. So she was not supporting living with Chusa. And then he went to, to Jesus and talked to him. So, and Jesus was a long, a long conversation. You can see in the book that I mentioned, The Good News. So let me summarize into three sentences here. First sentence that she that uh, Jesus taught her about what she was suffering. God does not impose his will and love on tyrants. God educates them. So first message, educate your husband. So God in other words was was giving her a message that you incarnated here, you compromise on this. So don't abandon your compromise. Don't give up your compromise. Go there and educate him. Heavenly wisdom does not exterminate passions. It transforms them. So educate and do your best to transform him. Transform yourself and transform him. Be faithful to God by educating your partner in the world as if he were your child. Be patient with him. We've got patient with, with our kids. Jesus was telling her, be patient with him. Okay? So, so she understood this message. She was still supporting Jesus' mission with the... the the apostles, and she stayed with him. But because of Chusa's life not so good, he had a, a health problem, and she became a widow, right? And, the, and after she became a widow, she started to have material difficulties, no money but she was keeping the faith. So she understood. So she was a noble, and then she became a servant, and then she emigrated to home together with her son. 
So at, in, at home, as a Christian, she was working with other Christians. And at that time, uh, Nero, right, was persecuting them. And she was condemned to be cremated, for cremation, fire. In the time that she was into the cremation, the executioner asked her, give up about Jesus, give up, give up about Christ. What are you doing here for him? Did he just teach you to die? What was her answer? Not only to die, but also to love you. And remember, she was in the cremation along with her son. And her son was also asking her to give up. <clears throat> There's a nice story that Divaldo Franco brought to us. Divaldo Franco uh, is one of the main mediums in Brazil. And Divaldo brought a story about that thing, that she was in the cremation and her son was asking her, give up, we're, we're gonna, they're going to die. They're going to kill us here under the fire. And she said, shut up. Keep your face, shut up. Divaldo said that uh, her son was incarnated uh, in Tio Nilson. Tio Nilson is a very friend of Divaldo in Bahia. And Tio Nilson, until he died, he was a little bit uh, refusing Jesus. You see, 2,000 years after he died here, he was still refusing Jesus. He was a pretty good guy, helped Divaldo a lot, but he had some restrictions with Jesus. You see, 2,000 years after that. But you see how strong was joy in here. So she asked her son, side by side with her, shut up. Keep your faith. We know what Jesus knows. God knows what happened. So look at that. Right after she did, she discarnated, Jesus has shown up to her. Have a good cheer. Here I am. And brought her. So if you read the story in the book that I told you, that's why you're going to cry. It's amazing how Umberto de Campos wrote the story right here. Amazing. Interesting thought about Joanne. So first century, of course, Joanne of Chusa. Uh, 13th century, Claire of Assis. Santa Claire. So this information was brought by Divaldo Franco. So if you want to know more about Claire of Assisi, so take a look into the, that's in a, that's in a film from 1972. It's Brother, Son, and Sister Moon. I think, he, I think this film received an Oscar. That uh, it presents the story of Claire and Francis, Francis of Assisi. They were living together at the same time. Beautiful film. Beautiful film. Try to see, you can search in, in some streamers here and see this film about Santa Claire. So in the 17th century, the Soro Juana Inés de la Cruz in Mexico, she started to write down the psychology, psychology, uh, not books at that time, but psychology uh, dissertations and uh, manuscripts about, about that. And in the 19th century in Brazil, Joana Angelica, a Sora that uh, was killed by Portuguese when she was defending uh, a church, right? The Portuguese trespassed her with a sword and she died in front of the gate, but this act avoid the Portuguese to take care of the church. And Joana de Angelis, the spirit, the awesome Joana de Angelis, the amazing one that she brought a lot of psychological books linking the psychological 
studies to the spiritism. So if you like the human mind, if you like how we process the psychological, the psychological activities, the psychological terms into the spiritism, take a look into the Joanna de Angelis books. There's a lot of books that she wrote about that. Okay? Very interesting story that you see that she was evoluting from Joanna de, de Chusa until Joanna de Angelis. So let's go to Mary of Migdal, the Madeleine. So most of you, I think you know about her. So what is the first message that you've got in your mind when you hear? You can say here. First message that comes to your mind when you hear Mary Madeleine. First. Sorry? Prostitute. Exactly. A prostitute. But was she a prostitute? We don't know. The story, we don't know. If you, if you read the book from Humberto de Campos, it's not that way. She was a, a rich woman, so she inherited money from her dad, right? And she was not able to, to give birth. So she was very depressive. And because of that, she let herself into the, let's say, world experience, material experience. A lot of parties at her home. So we don't know if she was a prostitute or not. She was very rich, but she was very depressive. A severe case of depression with possible obsession. To not say a certainty obsession. She was very beautiful and rich. What does that mean? It, she attracted a lot of men, a lot of parties, but she was not happy. So if you read the book, there are some times that she was about seven days locked in her room, in a dark room. So this is a, if you know a bit about depression, that's a, a clear symptom of depression. She was very depressive. And she, she had a hungry of love. She loved, love agape, not the love, the, the eros love, the agape one, the fraternal one. She was anxious for that. There was one day that she was, she was in the street and a, a beggar came to her asking for money because, she, uh, because the beggar want to be, want to meet uh, Jesus, because the beggar has a disease in the leg or something like that. And he was asking for money. Please help me. I, I need to go to Capernaum to talk to Jesus to cure me. And so she gave the money to the beggar. And maybe a year later or something like that, the beggar knocked at her door. She was very depressed. The beggar knocked at her door. So when the beggar talked to her, I know that you wanna that you wanna talk to, to, to Jesus. I know where he is. Would you like to come with me? And let's talk to Jesus. And she went from Migdal to Capernaum. It's about let's say two hours walking or maybe more than that. And she went there and look at what was the the message that Jesus gave to her. Could you think that anyone in the world was condemned to eternal sin because she was treated as a prostitute, sin? Imagine that time a woman that is very free, right? So she was thinking that she was a sinner all the time. And Jesus talked to her. Could you think that you're going to be for eternal? Of course not. Understand that virtue has to walk to a very narrow door. What does that mean? A very narrow door. The virtue. Your spiritual evolution. What does that mean, a narrow door? What comes to your mind when you talk about narrow door? It means that you cannot pass with two or three guys at the same time. You should cross it alone. 
by your own effort. That's the meaning of a narrow door. You should cross that door by yourself without no one helping you to cross that door, right? And fear nothing, fear nothing. It's only necessary to believe, keep your faith, right? And the spirit is gave to us an upgrade on this. It's a rational faith, right? It's not a blinded faith. It's a rational faith. So Mary, she decided to decline of her material life. And she became the message of the resurrection. Why she became the message of the resurrection? Because she was the first one to see Jesus materialize it. After the tomb was empty, she was the first one who saw Jesus. And he came with the message to, to the other ones. Look at that. Jesus is, a, is alive. He didn't die. And what is the symbol of that? She is the messenger of that. We are not going to die. We are just going to change the plane. Right? It's a uh, we are going to change from the material world to the spiritual world. That's the message. And she was the first one to, to give to everyone this news. So she fully understood the message of Jesus. And she became the mother. It doesn't matter if you are a biological mother. You can be the mother of others that are in deep need. So that's what she understood. She was alone. She was depressive, she was alone, and then she started to serve. She started to help others. Because even the, after Jesus passed away, the, the apostles, they put her aside because she was a woman. So they are going to spread the gospel, but Peter was directly to her, don't come with us. Because Peter still thinks about her as like a prostitute. Don't come with us. Stay here. She was once again alone, but she saw Jesus. She knows that Jesus is alive. So everything that he told me is true. And so she started to tireless, help those in need. And she was helping the, the ones with leper. And she worked with them. She gave hope to them. And then she got the disease when, when she discarnated because of the disease. And when she discarnated, she was received by Jesus. And look at the, the message that Jesus gave to her. You passed the narrow door. You were alone. You crossed that thing. You understood the message. You served the ones in need. You understand what you are suffering. And then you cross the narrow door, right? You love it so much. That's a pure love here. Come, I wait for you here. So see, Joanne was received by Jesus. Mary was received by Jesus. Pretty nice, right? So this one, if I have an hour, we can... Still talk, still talk. If I open the word here, someone will raise a hand. Oh, I got Mary, Mary, Mary. So let's understood a bit about Mary. She received, she accepted, not received, she accepted the task of motherhood of a, a Christic spirit. Can you imagine if you are going to be the motherhood or the fatherhood of a, a Christic spirit? It's the highest level that we know, right? In terms of evolution. She accepted that mission with totally resignation. So you see, she, she came from Nazareth to Jerusalem, a hundred miles to give birth. So it's a Christic one. So 
she lived it. She knew Jesus from the conception, so the as a kid until the cross, right? And beyond. Beyond. She saw Jesus when when he he came back after the the cross. After Jesus' crucifixion, she was supported by, by John the Evangelist in the city of Ephesus in Turkey, currently is in Turkey. And she stayed there until, he, until, until she passed away. So Mary, the three Marys, I think you heard about the three Marys, the stars three Marys. Mary of Nazareth was one of that Mary. The other Mary was Madeleine. The third Mary was the mother of, uh, of James the Minor. So the three Marys, they were so strong. See, they went when the crucifixion of Jesus, they were the Mary, the three Marys that faced Jesus in front of the, in front of the, the cross. Stay with him until the end. And just one apostle stay with the three Marys. Who was this apostle? John the Evangelist. And there was a phrase that Jesus mentioned while he was in the crucifixion, that she talked to Mary, women, here's your son, son, this is your mother. So, in other words, Jesus was asking John, take care of her. Right? So, getting old didn't didn't mean for her that she was diminishing her face or, or even uh, create some kind of bitterness because of the age. The fatigue for her was not something that will interfere. And she had a, a phrase that she gave to everyone that come in contact with her. And this phrase, by coincidence, is the same phrase that Emmanuel gave to Chico Xavier when Chico Xavier was some kind of very depressive, right? Can anyone say what phrase Mary used to talk to the others to give some kind of a comfort? Can you guess some? What's the phrase? This, what? Exactly. This shall pass. This shall pass. And when Chico Xavier was very depressed, Emmanuel came to him and asked Chico to put this thing in a, in a wood, this phrase. And this phrase is for the moments that you are very down and the moments that you are very happy. Everything will pass, right? So pay attention to that. So in... in I will not say all the cases because we've got we don't have the numbers, but in most of the cases she she comforted, she softened the pain of the others who came to her in Ephesus asking for her for some message, some kind of comfort when you are suffering. So and she gave that message. This shall pass. Believe. That's a beautiful message. I recommend you to read this message in the chapter 20 of the good of the book Boa Nova. It's it's very hard to say about this this part. That's when Mary started to discarnate. So when Mary was discarnated at, at the end of her life, Jesus came to her and asked her to come into his arms. So Mary started to, to make a new movement and Jesus grabbed her in the hand and Jesus kneels at her, right? And kissing her hand and say affectionately, look at this beautiful here. Yes, my mother, it's me. I came to get you because my father, God, wants you to be the queen of angels in my kingdom. So, no words about that, right? When you saw this message here coming from Humberto de Campos telling the story, what happened 
So I didn't see in any other book saying that story here. So I highly recommend you to take a look into the Boa Nova and read this chapter 20. It's beautiful. And here in Orlando, so if you get the I-4, there's a huge cathedral for Mary here, Mary Queen of Universe. And my mom, when she came here to visit me, she's a Catholic and Christian. She went to the church, to the mass there. And, and when she returned, she said to me, that was the first time that I saw a, a statue of Mary pregnant. And it seems there is a statue of Mary pregnant there in this church. Beautiful, right? So it's a, it's a very emotional story here if you, if you read that thing. And that brings the importance of Mary and the spiritual strength that she provides to us. Okay, let's summarize here. What we, what we depict from each one of the examples that we presented today. Joanna de Chusa. Fidelity to her values and to God in the face of tests that she was subjected to. So she was into crem cremation with her son. So this picture right here represents that she kept the fidelity for the value of fidelity to Jesus, to the Jesus message. She understood the spiritual life. Resignation in the face of difficulties in family relationships. Each one of us here incarnated. The earth is a, is a, is a planet of proof and atonements. There's no one suffering here. And the first point for us to improve in terms of spiritual life is our family. If we got friction in our family, try to change the view to this friction and see the friction as a point to re-educate you. What you need to change to surpass this friction. So that's what Joanna taught us here. And use your resource to support and spread the message of Jesus. Resource, not money. Resources mean sometimes study. Giving your hand to someone that they need. Right? There's a nice story from Chico that Chico sometimes the people was coming, the people were coming to him and Chico didn't even talk to them. Chico just gave to them a hug. Sometimes a beggar is asking for something, but the beggar just wants you, just wants someone to hear him. Sometimes they don't need money because they receive money. They receive food, but they just want someone to, to hear him, to make him not feeling invisible. So that's what you use your resources to support and spread the message of Jesus. Don't count on others to spread the word. Do yourself. Mary of Migdal. She represents the ones that are subjected to the to the world, to the matter, right? It's a mistake in that the humanity adopts. We put the material life right here and we forget about the spiritual life. So she changed that. Thing. And she was freed by the full understanding of the message of Christ. Overcoming loneliness, right? Look at that. We've seen so many people complaining about, I'm alone, I'm alone, I'm alone. Mary was fully alone. So she didn't have anything. She gave away all, all the money, all the people, and she followed Jesus along with the apostles, the apostles until Jesus was crucified. She was alone again, but she understood, I can help someone. I don't need to be alone with others. I can do myself and be with others. Tirely serve those most in need. So she went to the leper ones. She was giving her help to the leper ones. It's so dangerous at the time. It was almost a suicidal mission, right? 
leper at that time, there's no cure. And so she teaches to participate and persist in the fight. Don't give up. Right? When you talk about life, don't give up. Life, don't give up the ship. Mary. How can we summarize Mary? Poverty in spirit. If you wanna if you want to understand what is a poverty in spirit, Mary is teaching us what is a poverty in spirit. Fully understanding of working and serving as instrument, instrument of the divine will. She was the mother of a Christic spirit. Serenity in the face of a great pain. Imagine if you see your son, your beloved son, in front of you, crucified. You must be very, very strong in terms of spiritual, right? Interesting here. Respect our kids' choice and pursuits, walking with them as friends and helping them in their quests. As friends, right? But we need to educate them for sure, right? But don't forget that we are the best friend for them. <coughs> to be strong in the face of the hard tests we are subjected to, especially when facing our kids' pain. There is a, a quote that the, uh, our son or our daughter's pain is double in the mother, right? It doubles. So when we face those pains and the sacrifice of motherhood and fatherhood, fatherhood and, and, and motherhood, it's a mission, right? We are not coming to be a father or a mother here to not educate the spirit. So think about that. And it's a homework because, as I said, we don't have time to go further. It's a homework. I would recommend you to take a look into the question 189 of this book here, The Comforter, Consolador by Emmanuel. And this question here, it's about three pages only. So take a look into this question. And Emmanuel is giving the tips. If we, can, if we can summarize the message from Mary, how we can raise our kids and fulfill the duties evangelically, right? Leading the children to the good and the truth. So take a look at the question 189. I suggest you to take 189, the comforter. Take a look into this message. And you're going to learn a lot from this. Okay. Any questions here? Very emotional, right? But that's a message from Joana de Angelis, 2015, by Divaldo Franco. Remember the 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 question that I presented in the beginning from Kardec, Kardec was saying that the, the woman has even greater mission than, than men. Look at what Joanna summarized here. Jesus was always surrounded by women who under his tutelage fear nothing or anyone and follow him faithfully. Jesus knew that women through her organic constitution and hormones, is the force on which humanity relies. Force. Right? Without the merit for man, the motherhood that sublimates is the starting point for the exaltation of life and stellar glory in the world. Blessed servant of the Father faithful co-creator with him. If we could summarize the spiritual strength of the, the gospel woman, Joanna gave to us this message. Thank you all. Hope that this will motivate all of you to take a look into this deeper message from, from, from them. Thank you. <clears throat>